Hi, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner. And um, we are doing another Get Fit With Me series. And this is going to be meal prep edition. I am actually doing this on a different day. And I think I mentioned before, I'm still, my lighting still is not giving when needs to be gave, but we're still trying to figure it out. It's fine. Anyway, but like, um, yeah. Today I'm doing my meal prep. I'm actually doing three meals um, total. So I'm gonna probably divide this up into three parts just to be on the safe side. Um, two out of three are pretty easy because they're not in the meal prep book. Um, one is kind of just a freestyle in my head. And then the other one is kind of actually um, a duplicate of another recipe that I discovered at a restaurant. and I. I don't know if it's the same recipe, but I try my best to like kind of duplicate basically. And then the other is actually called meatballs and lemon. Um, also, um, I don't even know if I pronounced that right. I'm gonna, I'll put that here um, with mint and dill. I actually do not have mint. So instead I'm actually gonna use sage and the mint is supposed to go in the meatballs, but we'll use sage and sage tastes. I already know sage tastes good in meatballs, so we're, we're good on that. And as you probably are aware, I do not usually do meat. So we're using Beyond Meat for the, for the meat, for the meatballs. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So um, first things first, I think we are going to do the easier recipe. Um, well, the thing that's gonna take the longest, we're gonna get a head start on that. And I'll mix and master it as we go here. And yeah, but anyway, and we're going to get to it. Okay. So one of the things we're going to do first, and I kind of have all my ingredients out for what I'm going to be using for all um, for today. But um, actually, I have most of that. I don't have all of it out. I'll say that. Um, but we're going to start with the meatballs and lemon. Um, those are with the... Um, mint well sage and dill and i don't have fresh dill so we're actually going to do um a substitute so there's that anyway so one of the first things we're going to do is also another thing is instead of using regular wheat i'm actually using chickpea base so there's that um but first things first, we need to bring the water to a boil. So that's going to take the longest. So I need to get a larger pan here. And then we'll magic a television it and go to the next thing. We basically have to wait until the um, water boils and we'll just add this in and <clears throat> we'll keep it in for about 10 minutes and drain and then that's when we'll add like the lemon zest and all the other ingredients in for this. So that's going to be kind of an easy thing to do. So we can like probably prep some of that stuff ahead of time right now. So let's go ahead and get this cook cutting board here. Whoop. And before we go any further, <clears throat> all right, boys and girls, you probably knew what I was doing there, washing the hands. So, okay. Um, so we're waiting on that. I kind of want to prep some of the ingredients now. So I don't have to worry about it later on. So the lemon zest, it does call for, uh, calls for a teaspoon of a grated lemon zest plus the juice. So let's go ahead and get that lemon. And I'm gonna go ahead and wash this lemon. And then I'm also going to go ahead and get what we need here. Of 
clearly this is more than one teaspoon, but I um, kind of like to get everything all together and then I'm going to chop it up really thinly because that's probably what's in need for and what it really calls for. So uh, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm actually grabbing my handy knife. The knife that I use for all my automobile prepping. All right. So we kind of have this ready to go. We can just set this aside. So the other ingredients that calls for is, well, and also the juice. So we're just gonna cut this probably in half and then we'll have, we'll do the juicing thing later. This one we'll use for something else. Actually I have my, nope, I'll use it for something else. I already know I'm gonna use it for. I'm gonna use it for another meal that I have for later this week. So I am gonna go ahead and put that away for now. All right, there's that. So then the other thing it calls for is the dill and then, oh, the tablespoon of, well, we're doing sage. So we'll go ahead and get that tablespoon of sage. I love you. And I wanted to use the sage because it's about to go bad and I have plenty of it. I want to just use it before, it's, before that happens. So if you're wondering why. I'm using sage and it calls for fresh if you do it as the recipe it's going to cause for fresh um call for fresh um mint but instead i'm using sage oh yeah it's gonna smell good sage is just it gives i'll probably discard the rest of this because i don't see myself using some of these other ingredients like ever again that's kind of a downside if, unless you like or someone that is you know has like a herb garden and even then if you have an herb garden i don't know how to really make that work because i honestly feel like um it's really hard to be able to um, use a lot of herbs and them not go bad. So if anyone who's watching this video have a good way of using fresh herbs and then not go, going bad, please put that in the comments because I have no idea what to, how to do that. Because that's one of the few things that I end up having to throw away. Okay, so... And also, too, let me kind of give a... Okay, now you can see a little bit better, I feel like, what I got going on. So this is the sage that I just chopped up. So the next thing it calls for, and I'm actually going to put my recipe book on the other side here. Dill half of a garlic so one garlic clove and the two tablespoons of oil so the dill i'm gonna go ahead and grab that i'm not using um i'm actually using this kind of dill instead instead of fresh dill because well before mentioned Fresh herbs go bad quickly, and I don't want to keep buying fresh herbs to having to throw them away later. Okay, and then our garlic. It calls for two cloves total in this recipe, but I don't follow recipes when it comes to garlic. Because in my opinion, they never ask for enough. I like a lot of garlic, so instead of like the one, we're just going to do the two. I'm right, right off the bat. So we're gonna double the garlic. 
because I am a garlic girl. And I feel like a lot of you guys are too. Not a garlic girl, but someone who loves garlic. If you're someone like me who loves garlic, you're like, I don't understand why am I going to just do the bare minimum here with the garlic. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and slice this up. And what I think I might do, actually might put this in a small little bowl so that I can work on the next thing that it calls for. Cause it also calls for the meatballs and the meatballs are another part of the recipe. This is for like the, the pasta. And all this is gonna be come, going together anyway, this part. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and just put this on a little tiny bowl. So I did decide to put it in a bowl. Um, so right now I'm measuring up the dill and it calls for one tablespoon of dill. I love you. And so all the other ingredients are in here too. Then the only, only other thing I need to add is lemon zest. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that lemon zest in there too. Not the zest, but I'm sorry, the lemon juice. And it calls for like a tablespoon of that. But I am actually gonna eyeball it. And my lemon's small enough where it actually fits my lime squeezer, so it actually works out perfectly. Okay, I think we're good. So we have all that. I'm gonna set this aside. Well, this bowl side for like my um, pasta. So I'm setting that there. And the next thing we're gonna work on is the meatballs. Yes, 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 meatballs. And also too, that was all I need to do for the lemon, so that's nice. All right, so now we're gonna do the meatballs um, or get it ready to go. It calls for large bowls. I have the large bowl ready to go. And I'm just pre-measuring some of the ingredients right now because it calls for a third, one third of a cup of um, Greek yogurt. Actually, I believe it's calling for, yeah, plain Greek yogurt. And also too, this is about that. And also one of the things I probably should share, especially for those who aren't as familiar with my channel, I do not use regular yogurt. Um, this is actually silk yogurt that I use. Um, which is made with coconut milk because we're lactose intolerant over here. So we're not using that. So pretty much that's it for that. I'm putting that away. So, and then two tablespoons. So I also need the bread. So it calls for two slices of hearty white bread torn into one inch pieces. So real quick, I'm gonna move this. And I'm gonna put this cutting board right over here. And we also are almost at the point where the water is boiling. So we can finally add the pasta in and make that happen for like 10 minutes. But, so this is the bread. Um, I'm probably gonna put it back in the freezer once I'm done with it. So this one calls for two slices. And I'm gonna put this right back in the freezer. And the kind of bread I got, instead of white bread, I actually tried to actually jasmine it up. And I got um, brioche, 
So this is extra buttery. So our, our meatballs are gonna be good. So we're gonna put this back in the freezer because that is one way to keep bread. If you wanna keep bread longer, put it in the freezer. And all right, we're going to be adding this in to boil now because our, yep, it definitely is boiling. So we got it now. I'm gonna add both boxes in. It calls for one and a half cups. And this is not quite that. It's actually a little less than that. Um, as we know, we want one and a half cup would be 12 ounces. And so, yeah, I need to add two more ounces here. And I went ahead and just added two more ounces. I kind of eyeballed it and then we're just going to save the rest for later because I am going to follow try to follow the recipe just a little bit, just a little bit. So we can put this away. All right. So that's boiling and we're going to be up. Oh, yes. It calls also for a teaspoon of salt. So I'm also going to add the salt in there too. I almost forgot. I'm gonna actually turn this down just a little bit and I'm gonna turn on the fan. So now I can see what I'm doing here. All right, so we see that that's doing its thing. I turned it down because I did have it on high so I could get it to boil quicker. That's pretty much it for that. Whew. All right, so next is Oh yeah, we need to cut these into one inch um, slices. It says to tear it, but since this was frozen, I'm not sure how well that's going to go. Well, I got to turn that down even more. My kitchen's doing what it does best too much. All right. So then this will go back in here for our bread. Because it calls for us to smash the bread together with the uh, yogurt. And then we're also adding um, two tablespoons of water. I'm actually going to grab this thing. Grab the rubber spatula. Also, too, I don't think I need this anymore. So we're going to actually discard this as well now. Okay. And then I'm gonna kinda eyeball it for two. Okay. I added that and I'm gonna smash it now. All right, can you see what I'm doing? Sheesh. All right, so 
So we're smashing this until it's smooth. So that's going to be interesting. I'm not sure that's supposed to look like. It kind of looks gross. This looks like a science project. I guess it didn't take very long for it to get smooth, though. There's that. Um, probably helps that I used um, brioche bread versus regular white bread. I don't know. I guess this is what they mean by smooth. It looks kind of, it's giving Kai's cheese, but that's okay. I think that's good enough. And I just want to double check to make sure I don't need to use this again. But okay, we're going so we are back. So now we're adding the meat in. And I probably should have mentioned this before. Um, besides also using like my meat substitute, I could not find patties. Actually, I'm using sausage. So this is going to be really flavorful. And my, hopefully it's not too flavorful. I, I mean, I, I don't think there's such thing as that, but we'll find out. I use, I found the only thing they had was like sweet sausage, sweet Italian sausage. But anyway, there's that. And then, so salt, pepper. So I need a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of pepper. Have a teaspoon of pepper. And then I need the garlic and mint. So the remaining garlic and the remaining mint, and then that's pretty much all of our ingredients. Um, so yeah. And we already know what I'm about to do when it comes to the garlic situation. So I'm actually going to do a quick switcheroo again. Move this over on the side real quick. We actually don't need this anymore either. I use the remaining of it. Well, I'm going to end up using the remaining of this for everything else I'm cooking, but that's a whole nother story. That's just a side note. Oh yeah, we're just gonna get this ready to go for all the other things we're cooking today. All right. We also got about two more minutes on the um, pasta. So there's that. Also, if you're wondering how, why my energy level just kind of drained, I am actually starving. Um, I went from being A-OK -okay to just like, now I'm like starving like Marvin. So yeah. 
after I cook this, we already know what I'm about to do. I'm going to eat. It's just a matter of which thing that I cook today am I going to eat. Okay, and then we're going to use the rest of the sage and then the, after that, once the sage is gone that we have here, I'm going to just discard the rest of this because I do not see me using the rest of this anytime soon. I just don't see it. So, yeah. The good news is the rest of my recipes I'm cooking are not going to take very long. This is the longest recipe, which is why I wanted to get it out the way. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside for now because we are going to use this cutting board again. And also, I'm going to move this back over here. And we're going to mount magic right. television. So we just got done with pasta, so the pasta is done. So then the next thing we need to do is actually stir in the rest of those ingredients. And I just wanted to show you what that looked like. All right. And then this is the ingredients we're stirring in, what we prepped earlier on. And then we we'll also need to add on top of this, this isn't it along with just these dry ingredients and the lemon juice we also are going to do two tablespoons of oil i'm gonna eyeball it oh yeah this looks good and then we'll season of course with salt and pepper but that's what this is once we stir it all up I'm going to add the salt and pepper to it, too. I'm not even going to add the regular salt and pepper that it says, because, you know me, I'm not a basic girl. I'm going to add lemon pepper, and I'm going to add my goddess dressing seasoning, which also has more ingredients. I like lots of ingredients. So this is actually ready already. We just need now need to make the meatballs that go with it. And this is our one of our meals. I might actually eat this tonight because it just... I don't know, it just looks really good. Stir fry, I can just have for lunch tomorrow. And then I'll have my other stuff for dinner later. So there's that. All right, now. so now we get to work on the meatballs and fry them. And yeah, that's almost positive that's gonna be what I end up doing for today, meal wise. So, okay. It calls to mix it with your hands, which I don't love this part, but that's what it's calling for. Child, I, <laughs> I am not a fan of mixing things with your hands. I did already wash my hands um, before I resumed the video. Yeah. This is going to be interesting. I'm not sure how I feel this is going to go. Okay, there we go. It's starting to look like something, I guess. It's starting to look like it's cohesive. It just looks weird because I'm not using beef. Um, 
that's what it does call for if you're to follow the recipe it calls for beef but i didn't do that all right i'm going to read what's next Okay, it should be a total of 24, so I need to make 24 meatballs with this. This is gonna be interesting. I just, I... Um, and this is a case of me not reading things ahead of time. If I would've read this ahead of time, I would've totally brought gloves for that. Cause I don't like when my hands get gross like that. So also, it does call for, so I also have my pan ready to go here. We're trying to get my pan ready to go. We're heating a fourth of a cup of, whoa. Okay, I don't have enough oil. Okay, now that's about a fourth a cup of oil. And it's gonna call, it says about eight to 10 minutes is gonna be how long it takes to cook this. And then we're sprinkling the feta cheese on top to end it. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my recipe book because that's the only thing I'm cooking on the recipe book. But yeah, I need to make a total of 24. I need to make a total of 24. So. Ugh, I really wish uh man i'm not a fan of that uh it didn't say what size these are supposed to be either i didn't i mean i didn't read it exactly so i'm just gonna do the best i can and just call it good and i'm just gonna count i'm gonna do it and count as i go type thing and just call it good that way two Four. Seven. trying to make it where they're all about the same size and as you could tell because and maybe it also has to do with the fact that i'm not using real meat 11 12 so this is about half of it i just used already see it's kind of just ugh, 12 and i'm probably gonna do 12 at a time so i'm gonna wash my hands again 
because it's this is driving me nuts. I do not. I. This is not. I will say this. If you're someone who's kind of a germaphobe, which you would think with me having pets, I'm not, but I actually am a germaphobe. Yikes. Okay. I'm gonna move. <coughs> Sorry about that, the bit's out of there. And one of the things I'm actually gonna do, I'm gonna prep it on another pan. I mean, on a plate. So that I don't have to do it and wait as I go type thing. I'd rather just for the remainders, just be ready to go and then I'm done. Also, probably should have put the timer on. That was a talent what I just did right there. I put the timer on without touching, using my fingers for it because my fingers already had the um, meatball stuff on it. And I did not want to cross contaminate. So I was like, nope. You will not make me do it. And also too, if you're someone in order to like move meatballs around, um, I know most people just usually just use just like a spatula. I would highly recommend having tongs because yeah. And We'll see how good I did too, by the way, because I'm trying to count it out right now to make sure I stretch this properly. I have a feeling I'm going to be off on the number. These are like one of those recipes I feel like... I, I don't know how people are accurate when it comes to making meatballs. Okay, yeah, I'm going to be off because some of them I think I'm going to be bigger than I probably should have. See? I'm going to actually withhold doing that for some of these and make them smaller and see what happens. Oh, yeah. Eight. I got to make four more. Three more. I think it has everything to do with consistency also of like my meatballs too. Yeah, we're gonna make it work. The first portions are big ones and then I have some baby ones in here to make it do what it do. It is what it is. But once we're done with this, we're done with this. All right. I'm going to wash my hands now. Then we're also going to get this out of the way. Some of the stuff I have to reuse, so we're going to be washing it. Okay. So, all right, we're moving it. And over here, we see the meatballs are cooking. I get my tongs now. Let's see what they're looking like. Oh, yeah. They're definitely cooking.
Now my smaller ones are going to be probably much easier to cook. So the second portions probably be just a little bit easier because I made the second portions a tad bit smaller. And while we're waiting on this, I'm going to get the meal prepping stuff ready to go. By getting it ready to go, I'm going to start prepping some of my stuff right now. I'm going to grab a plate because I am going to eat some of this one. I'm going to eat this recipe in a little bit. So this is going to go here. And if you're wondering what I'm doing, I actually use a spoon. I'll just go over here. I use a spoon and try to like portion it evenly with a spoon till I get every bit because it's four servings so it's about two scoops each oh yeah almost two scoops each so this is actually going to be pretty easy to be done with I'm actually going to go ahead and just move this here like so and this is going to be the remaining right here. Come to mama. Okay. Also a trick to being a good chef or cook. Always test your products. But went back to washing my hands because for that, that was the reason why. Move this back over here. And got about less than a minute to go. I'm trying to. These meatballs aren't quite meatballing. I feel like they're more like weird slider situations. Some of these look done. Because I turned a lot of it, I turned this down a bit. So it was cooking just a little too fast for my liking. So it's six each. So that's one thing that makes it easy. So. Got one more portion of meatballs to make and then we're off to the races Bam. That's that on that. I'm debating whether I should do the stir fries or not. All right, so while we're waiting on that, the last bit that we do here is we're actually drizzling 
this with the feta cheese. So that is the meal. I'm actually going to cheat and put some of this in here ahead of time so that I don't have to like wait and get this out the way. All right. But we already know what we do here, but I just kind of want to then show you the finished product. Whoop. You don't want that problem, I will cry. Bon appetit. This is what we're doing here. So this is what we're gonna have for dinner.